My lowest point was when I was outside eating with my friends and I hear people talking around me about me. She don't even look the same. Oh. She definitely like photoshops her videos, which I never thought would happen because I was like, these comments are just online in person. No one was saying they did. <laughs> That's when it really got to me and I started like taking a step back. Like I don't know what to do. I didn't feel confident anymore. I what made you kept going? I didn't want to give up. In the end of the day, if this is what I want to do, then this is my reality. And I need to figure out a way to cut to get over that. I uh, transitioned over to Instagram and it worked. I'm not the girliest, prettiest, most feminine girl. And I'm sure a lot of people out there that are like me that are like, I feel lower than the people that are at that society standard. I want to be here to show people that it's okay. Even though people that look like us, we can still win. So where are you coming from? Chinatown. Yeah, you're from Chinatown, right? I am from Chinatown. That was a good one. <laughs> I'm from Chinatown and I'm also coming from Chinatown. Yeah. I was having coffee with my sister and my mom. Where, um, yeah, tell us about growing up in Chinatown. I was really comfortable because, you know, everyone spoke the language that I speak, but as an immigrant, I think is a safety nut, but at the same time, I wasn't aware of what was outside of me. I kind of feel like I was trapped but I had no idea that I was until I got out of it. And then I was like, okay, there is so much more than Chinatown. But I, I, I still feel very close to Chinatown, even though I don't live in Chinatown anymore, but I still go there all the time. Whenever I'm in the city, I'm always like, let's go to Chinatown. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I hold it very dear to my heart. And when did you, I guess you said you didn't know until you left, where did mm -hmm. you leave to? I am in Flushing now. No, I no, I meant like, uh, uh, yeah, like when, what was your exposure? to uh, New York outside of China Chinatown. Where was that? Yeah. I got a, um, I got my first retail job at Adidas in Brooklyn. Okay. So I was in Fulton Street. I was downtown Brooklyn. That was my first exposure to a community that was in Chinatown. Cause I would go to school around Chinatown and also um, Manhattan as a whole. So I've never left Manhattan, like lower Manhattan. So when I saw Fulton, I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of similar to what Chinatown is, where it's like, everything is really closed. It was all like low rise buildings, but um, all of my coworkers were uh, people of color. And I was one of the only two Asians in there. And I think that had like a huge impact on the way I talk and also like, um, how I feel connected to people that is not Chinese or Asian. Mm. Um, yeah, that was my first exposure. And then I went to college and then I saw like a bigger crowd of like everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but I was still around Chinese people. I was still very much like my close friends are, are still Chinese. Just for context. So like we met uh, when you were working for a company that I co-own. Mm. Yeah, that's how we first met. Yes. You know, and uh you were living in Flushing at the time. Yep. Yeah, and you were you were a very great retail personnel for us. Yeah, you did a great job while you were working with us. Um yeah, and then, you know, since then obviously a lot of things have changed cuz I think that was back in like 2018. Yeah, 2019, yeah. 2019, mm -hmm. yeah, and um the pandemic happened and during the pandemic you were also working with us to a capacity, like working yeah, yeah, on social yeah. media stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, you became a content creator. Yeah, so tell us about like how that transition happened. Um, honestly, I have to shout JK out. Cause JK was the person. <laughs> I, didn't, um, I didn't lead this to, to get a shout no, out no, though. It, no, it was in, in a good way. Um, yeah. Because JK was I didn't the set first. this up so I could get a shout out by no means. It wasn't him, it wasn't him. You're pay later. I mean, JK has to be bought up regardless of um, the question. Uh, but yeah, so I worked at Alumni of New York, um, alum, Alumni of NY, um, which is a boutique, a local New York boutique. And I had a lot of fun working there. I went from retail to social media. And um, I worked with Jay Key because Jay Key kind of oversaw the uh, creative process. And he personally went on to TikTok and then blew up. And he was like, yeah, you need to see TikTok, you need to go on TikTok. <laughs> and he gave me the idea to teach Chinese on TikTok. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just try, I have none of lose, right? Wait, hold on, I gave you that idea. You did, you did. Oh you shit, did. Okay, It was like even... a one to one on one conversation where you were like, Ting Ting, you should try teaching Chinese on TikTok. And I was okay. like, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, let me do it. 
So I did it and I didn't even remember telling you to do that, but that's dope that I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um it, it was pretty crazy cuz I still remember uh I checked the next day or like two days after I got like 5,000 views and I was like Oh my God, this is a huge deal. <laughs> I rose out of my couch and I was like, I need to make more TikToks. And I started posting, I think every single day. Cause it was really easy content. I was just, I had a template. I was teaching people how to pronounce Chinese words. Um, That's the one that we was like, the shit. That was the yeah, one that yeah, you was yeah, doing yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, so I, I had like a, like a whole format and I just followed that format the entire way through. Um, and my first video that went viral was also from that, uh, series as well um but it, which it, it, video was it it was uh teaching people how to say correcting people how to say ni hao ma so i was very i was very mean i was very much like it's not ni hao ma it's ni hao ma right so i i, I was very mean so i got a bunch of views a bunch of comments a bunch of hate and People were just like, you don't even speak English well. You're going to teach Chinese. And, I, and my, I'm like, exactly why I'm teaching Chinese? Because I can't speak English. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't think that uh, the hate comments would get to me yet. That was still me, like, you know, 100% energy. Like, I don't care. Uh, but it, it slowly, like, got to me. Um, but that's how I started. That's how I uh, popped off on TikTok. And then I decided to take my content outdoors. So I started like doing food videos. I started like shouting out spots in Chinatown. Um, because of the pandemic where, you know, uh, a lot of the businesses were impacted by COVID. So I was like, I want to do something for the community. And the things that I was doing include were still very much like Chinese. So I had like a way to still teach Chinese, but also like make it the community and also do memes on the side as well. So I was just kind of like, okay, I want to try the things that I want to do and I want to see which one uh, people like. And after like time and content, uh, people people um, lean towards the meme and also like the Chinatown food more. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. But then the more I did it, the more I was like, I don't know how to like sustain. I don't, I don't know how to keep going because it's just me. I It was just me and my tripod. I had no team. Um, I would go out to Chinatown. I would like set up a tripod, run to the, in, to the front of the store and I would like do a dance and then run back to check on it. And it was just like time after time. I was just like, I'm tired. And I wasn't getting any, I wasn't getting any income. I had like no sponsorship. I did it for like a whole 10 months with no income on it whatsoever. I was just living all of, of my um, my savings. So I was just kind of like- So you weren't working a retail job, but you were still like committed to doing this. It wasn't because of TikTok where I left the social media job. It was actually because I had an opportunity. I was casted for a dating show <laughs> and I was very set on getting it. And then, you know, when, when I did didn't this, get it. When, when, when did this happen? What year? Because uh, we stopped working together, I would say, like 2021. Yeah, right? yeah, that year, yeah. that same year. So it was summer of 2021. Uh, and the second I was like in the the process of getting, uh, getting ready for the dating show, that's when I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this show, then I can't really have anything else, you know. Um, what what was the name of this dating show? Can you talk about it now that it's it's? it's I, I don't it's, even think it's on. I because I, I've been looking. <laughs> I was like, where is this show? And it gas me because y'all not gonna win. Um, it was supposed to be about horoscopes. I forgot mm. the name because it was so long ago. Um, but it was supposed to be about horoscopes, and it's very much like Love at First Sight, where they cast like twelve uh, people for for uh, twelve dudes and twelve girls, and then they meet, and then they will see how how people interact depending on their sign. Um, and they made it sound really promising. I guess they all do. 
but I was I, I fell into the trap and I was like, okay, so if I'm gonna do this, then I can't have any other job, you know. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna leave alumni. I'm gonna I'm gonna focus. Is that on... why you left? Yeah, the yeah, right. yeah, yes, yes. Yo, son, you should have told me. I right? didn't tell anyone. Nadia asked me. I didn't tell her. Michael why didn't you tell me about this? I could have like guided you through, like yo, like what the contract was and all this shit. Yeah, I, I was just very in my head. <laughs> I was very in my head. Well, what was the production company? Was it a big production company? I hope like. I can never remember. Okay. I can never remember. Like, how do you know if it's like The Bachelor or like some like you know? Oh, uh, true. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> if it was, I would have remembered, but it wasn't. But it was. It was a new concert. It was a new show. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Yeah. So it was probably a production deal. Yeah, I could had. go yeah. back to my yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But they curious. made it sound really promising, and I went through yeah. like rounds of casting interviews you know i they put me they told me to like put on different dress to do like a different <laughs> hairstyle they were like make sure you're presentable and i was like okay okay so i was just in my head like okay this, i'm gonna do this for sure yeah. i even bought a bag <laughs> <laughs> i was like i have to come i have to come ready um but i didn't get casted i didn't get cast and how did they find did they find you because of social i think okay. so they were like, I also got casted for like a movie as well, which I also didn't get up, uh, end up getting that role. But at that time, it was kind of like a lot of opportunities were opening up for me. Because of your TikTok? Yeah, because of TikTok. It was, and it was the TikTok where you were like, the shit, that was the style yeah, of video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah I was still doing uh, Chinese. Right. Yeah, because that was like summer where I haven't gone outside yet. Mm -hmm. And yeah, after I that, I went outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember um, your parents were very uh, strict about mm. spending time outside because mm. I know like the concept of COVID was especially mm. heightened in the Chinese community. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were just making TikTok videos at home. Yeah, yeah, in my room. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because I have nephews, you know, so I was like very careful with going out and who I'm with. Always like triple mask, you know. Um, but yeah, I didn't get it. So I, I guess that was when my uh, journey of being a creator started like going downhill, even though I was kind of like, I don't care, but mentally behind me, it was like a lot of things building up already. And then the hate comments got to me. Um, I think my, my, um, my lowest point was when I was outside eating with my friends and I hear people talking around me about me. Oh, that's that girl. That's the girl on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like talking shit. And it wasn't, it wasn't like just, you know, any, any, it wasn't about my, um, my content. It was about like the way I look. And they were just like, oh, she don't even look the same. Like oh. she definitely like photoshops her videos. Okay. She's so like, it's just all types of mean physical stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just like with my friends, you know, and I was so embarrassed. And I think that's when it really got to me. And I started like taking a step back. Like, I don't know what to do. I didn't feel confident anymore. I started caring about what people say about me. Um, and my friends were also against me doing social media as well. They were just kind of like, you're so sensitive now. And you're not like the same thing that I, the same thing that I used to know. Maybe you should drop social media. Maybe this is not for you. But in my head, I was like, no, this is just the beginning. Um, and this was all happening in 2021, 2022? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It was like winter 2021 and then going into 2022, like the entire year was just like bad. But you were still making content at this time. Yeah. I, I was releasing like one video per week or something. Right. So you went from making a video every day mm -hmm. in your house to just releasing a video a week. Yeah. But you were still making stuff. Like what made you kept going? That I didn't want to give up. I didn't want to give up. I was just kind of like, I don't think this is the end. I don't, I don't. I see myself going further. And even though I didn't have any support and even though it was really hard. Um, but something in me was just like, this is not the end. This is not, this is not it. Let's keep going and see what else is there. So I was, um, but I was like taking breaks from TikTok. And then that's when I uh, transitioned over to Instagram when I was like, okay, I'm going to start posting on Instagram and see what's up. Maybe I'll get less hate. <laughs> and I started using my old content for TikTok and I moved it over to Instagram. Um, and it worked. I, I didn't get as much hate. And I was like, okay, maybe Instagram is where it's at. Uh, TikTok is just a bunch of haters. <laughs> I went to Instagram and then uh, I started doing a lot more memes. Yeah. 
Uh, Because I was just kind of like, okay, the food thing is cool, but is there other things that I could do? Um, I also wanted to do like dating because I was like, fuck this dating show. I'm going to start my own dating show. (laughs) 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 So I did that and I tried to get on YouTube, trying to make like a long form video, which is like four or five minutes. Um, Right. And that was pretty fun, but it was just hard to maintain. Yeah. It was hard to like find people that were okay with being on camera and also like setting up the camera myself, being the talent myself and also editing the video myself was just too too much work. It was way too much work. I couldn't switch back and forth with the producer mindset to like the talent mindset. And it was just also really awkward. Like I didn't feel genuine and it didn't feel like a real date. Um, because when you have so much in mind where you're like, oh, this angle isn't right. The lighting isn't right. Like it, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> like I don't need, I don't need my man to say this. Right, like, right, yeah, right. Like, can, we, can we do that again? <laughs> yeah, like, we're going to cut this off anyway. Uh, like, right, right. It, it was too much. It was too much in my head that I was like, this is not a real day anymore. I'm really just here for content. So I did that for like four or five episodes and I was like, I can't do this. And I stopped doing that. Um, but I still wanted to try uh, skits and acting. So I did a lot more memes. And the memes are still going. Uh, that's what I uh, do mostly now. I do a lot of skits. And I have fun with them. And I also have a friend that uh, takes the videos for me now. Um, so I, I get something off my hands. So it's, it's been pretty calm and steady. I try to have a consistent schedule of uh, posting at least two videos a week, no matter what it is. Cause I used to have like a, okay, it has to be this, 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 and that. And I'm like, whatever it is, as long as I'm making something that I like, it's cool. So I'm at a, I'm at a pretty, uh, steady place right now. Um, well, first of all, as, uh, as, as your former employer and as a friend, I had no idea that you were going through all of this. Yeah. I, I yeah. Was and to so myself. I feel bad that I didn't know that this was going on. And, uh, and I also, I'm very, very impressed that you're doing everything on your own and that you actually even attempted to try to implement a dating show. <laughs> We're actually not attempted, actually made it. Um, yeah, I had no idea that you were doing all of this. So so like I applaud you for doing this. Thank this you, is this you. is very impressive. Did you ever got to monetize off all this work that you put in as a content creator? I do have campaigns that I take here and there. But in terms of me reaching out to brands, I have not done so. Yeah. I've, I've tried to reach out to agencies because um, I waited a really long time. I didn't know if I wanted a management. I also didn't know what it was. I was kind of scared because I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to sign my life away. I don't know if if I have an agent and then my entire like content, my direction, everything of me will be in control um in their control so i was i was very hesitant so i was like let me not act on this but i i kind of wish i did my research earlier because uh speaking to a bunch of different creators or even like actors or actresses having an agent or like a manager is definitely not the case of what i thought it was um so now i'm like reaching out to like management i'm trying to see like if if i'm qualified to to did anybody ever reach out to you I feel like they're scams. The the emails that I see in my inbox, I feel like those are not real agencies. Maybe I'm wrong, but they I, I go onto their website and they just look like they're out here scamming. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, not it, not it, not it. Yeah, what was your first brand deal? Yeah. Uh, it was actually with New York City. Uh, um, New York City Health. It was for COVID. That was like November 2021. It was like $200 where I um, I had to emphasize on, you know, uh, wearing your mask and cleaning your hands and following like the guideline and mandate. So it was actually for the government. Um, that was my first one. I posted it on TikTok and Instagram for $200. Oh my God. And I back then I already had like 70K followers at least, but I had no idea on what- On both platforms together? Oh or? no, just on TikTok. Cause I wasn't on Instagram. So you were, you had 70K followers on TikTok at the time. Mm. Got you. Yeah, and I was still taking like $200 uh, sponsorships. But back then to me, that was like a huge, like, oh my God, this is my first ever, it's my first time ever getting money of just videos that I make. So it, it was it was like a big deal. Um, and the biggest sponsorship, I would say Amazon Prime, 
uh, I work on the, I work with them on a premiere video for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh, okay, uh, so it was also, recent. This was recent. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was like last month. But I also work with Nike. I work with eBay. I work with a bunch of different brands that, in my head, are like pretty big in their own category. Uh, Those with, are big brands. Yeah, I, I'm very, I'm definitely very grateful because I feel like. I feel like with the content that I do, that's like one of the things that I wanted to uh, maintain is to have like a, not like a, like one niche. I want it to be about me and not the niche that I'm in, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so yeah. you don't want to be just categorized as that's the Chinese girl that teaches me how to say ni hao ma, right. or that's the Chinese girl that teaches me how to, like tells me which restaurant to go to. It's like, you want them, you want your community and audience to like you holistically. Yep. So you are not a full-time content creator right now. I am not, I am a part-time content creator, but I do want to be full-time. How that's close to you, how close to being full-time do you think you are? And what's the biggest switch? Uh, when I start getting consistent income from content, uh, besides the uh, sponsorship, so getting uh, in, uh, getting consistent income from just making videos. So the platforms that I post, like YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, um, I think that would determine whether or not I can make this full time. How big? Uh, what are your numbers? Let's go through your numbers right now. How, hmm. So. How, what's your biggest platform now? Is it IG over TikTok now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. Slightly. Okay. I have 180 on Instagram and 150 on TikTok. Okay. And then YouTube? 1K. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there yet. I, I got to start. I got to start. <laughs> okay, great. And then so your monetization up until this point has probably been just um, like brand deals and maybe a little bit of like platform, like, you know, the creativity program, maybe when Instagram was doing the, the reels, the, the short yeah, stuff. Yeah, yep, okay, yep, cool. yep. Okay, yep, cool. Yep. Um, interesting, okay. And then everything's been inbound. Yeah, yep. As in people have been reaching yeah. out to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, mm. got you. Um, okay. I, I, I remember I, I hit you up like last year and I was like, yo, why don't you hit me up? And you were like, nah, like, you be intimidating sometimes. <laughs> I be scared. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, yo, like you should hit me up. And um, and I think this is great that we got to catch up because I have so many things. And I mean, not even me. This this guy probably has so many things that he would like to share. I think one thing that I always thought that you had was the cultural fluency that you had. And you had the superpower of being a New Yorker, like a real New Yorker from Chinatown, from Pell Street specifically. I remember you're you from Pell Street. Wow. Yeah, you're from Pell Street. And a lot of the Chinese American kids from Chinatown, either they're like only English speakers or they just speak Cantonese. And the Cantonese they speak is like decent, but it's not like great. Rarely do I see them speak in Mandarin. One thing that I noticed with you is that you speak fluent Canto, you speak fluent Mando, and you also speak fluent English, and you're a real New Yorker, a real person from Chinatown. Um, and I think all those, and then you had like a very diverse array of friends, like you were able to just move in different rooms. So I always thought like, man, like if Ting Ting understands how to package that into content, like I think I think she'll kill it. You know what I mean? So that's why I was like, oh man, you you gotta be a content creator. Like you gotta do this. And I'm so glad that you did. And then now that you're able to like, I see your content on my feed often. So I'm like, yo, it's great that she's just continuously moving. I had no idea about, you know, all this, uh, I guess some of the uh, learning experiences that you had to gain. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really tell anyone. Even to like my closest friends, I was still very much like, holding back on all of the details. Yeah. So I was really much just alone in that journey. So don't feel bad. <laughs> it was my active decision to not tell anyone about it. Are you more like, I mean, you're obviously here. So mm. are yeah, how just, are you dealing with that? Like, how are you dealing with that now? Yeah, I'm, I'm in a much better place. Uh, 
I guess at first I didn't know how much this will impact me, especially like the hate comments. I thought I could just, you know, laugh about it and just forget about it. But slowly it was like getting to me, especially after hearing them, you know, come at me in person, which I never thought would happen because I was like, all these comments are just online, you know, in front of a screen. I bet in person no one would say shit. They did. <laughs> they, they said a lot of shit. So I was like, damn, I'm so vulnerable. And there was... Like my friends and my family, they will understand, but it's hard to have someone that would know exactly what I'm going through, you know? So I felt felt very alone. But then I um, took like a year and a half to kind of just prepare myself or better say to teach myself how to get over it. Because in the end of the day, if this is what I want to do, then this is my reality. And I need to figure out a way to cut, to get over that. And they really don't matter. Like they don't know me. They are just looking for anyone to, to yell at so they can make themselves feel better. So I'm like, I'm glad that I'm here <laughs> at least representing how I look and how I sound because not I'm not the girliest, prettiest, most feminine girl. And I'm sure a lot of people out there that are like me, that are like, I feel lower than the people that are at that society standard. Um, so I wanna be, a big part of me is I want to be here to show people that it's okay. Even though people that look like us, we can still win. You know, we can yeah. still, we can still get it. Hell yeah, yeah. Let's break down your um, your audience right now, your community. Where are they from? Are they from New York? Are they from, like, yeah, is it mostly male, mostly female? I'm curious about your demographics. Yeah, I would say 80% of my um, audience is from New York. Uh, depending on which platform, I believe Instagram, I'm like 70% male. And TikTok is like 50-something percent male. So it was 50 like, to 60 So it was like, it's okay, 60, 40 uh, 60 male, 40 female, mm -hmm. and then 70% 70. 70 male and 30 female on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Got you. Got and my you. 1K on YouTube is like a 60 <laughs> female. <laughs> they matter. A 60 yeah. female yeah. and 40 male. <laughs> and, then, so what was, and then one of the questions we always think about, um, you know, and we always ask content creators is, uh, what do you what do you think is your utility that you're providing, right? So um, at the end of the day, you know, it's all about time. <coughs> And if you want my time, you got to give me something, right? Like as, 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 as bad as that sounds, that's the reality in the world that we live in, right? So if I'm scrolling and I stop on, on your FYP, it might be like, oh shit, I'm getting tax info. Oh shit, mm -hmm. I'm, I, oh, I just get to laugh. Oh shit, I get to eat, whatever it might be, right? So uh, I'm curious, like for us, it's so, it might be like food. It might be with the show now, it might be like, oh shit, I didn't think about that as a creator. But I'm curious, what do you think your current audience takes away as their utility? I would say insider knowledge about New York and also just entertainment. Great, yeah. Yeah. And that is my, my end goal as well, just to be entertaining. Because mm -hmm. I think uh, comedy has a very special place in a lot of people's heart. Um, at least for me, I, I'm always going for comedy movies or when I'm scrolling on my uh, page, either YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, I always stop for funny content. I always want to laugh. And I do believe that social media, that's what social media is for. Even though, yes, it's educating and yes, it's now the new Wikipedia. But for me, it's very, it's very entertaining. Well, it, you know, the stuff that does the best is stuff that makes you cry or smile or yell, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it has to elicit one of those major, major emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's either gonna get you pissed off and mm -hmm. you're saying something or whatever, you know, or it's gonna make yep. you laugh, it's gonna make you cry. Um, I'm curious, you know, JK is also, um, I mean, I think we all speak, all of us speak another language, but he reads, I speak Korean, but he reads Korean news, right? So mm -hmm. you speak Mandarin and Cantonese. Do you read in Mandarin and can Cantonese too? Like, do you follow news from back home, like where your parents are from, I guess? I do, I do, I do. I'm actually, uh, I follow different creators on different platform. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, there is a slight uh, difference for what I use it for. YouTube could be educational because it's long, longer format. I mm -hmm. could like actually sit down and be like, well, I'm learning. Um, but I also follow a lot of Hong Kong and Taiwanese uh, YouTubers 
and they do all entertainment content like that's literally all they do mm -hmm. um they either make like a game show or they make like food content that's very relatable um so that's definitely something that i that i'm inspired by as well because i do think long format will now become like the new tv so that um that aspect of like entertainment comedy being funny being emotional is like key for long format uh, content, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I think our, our philosophy is that it's already been TV for the last mm -hmm. 10 years. But I think um, the reason why I asked that question is, especially with someone as fluent as you are, have you thought of, had, do you make any content that's specifically targeted towards getting more of an audience mm -hmm. or a community from there, mm -hmm. right? And by the way, in terms of Chinese, like Mandarin content, like I'm, they're so far ahead of us yeah. in their level of sophistication. Like Chinese netizens and and the stuff that they like, it's just they're so much savvier. Even though you're as an American, I think your perception of what happens in China, in particular, you're like, well, you know, it's it's TikTok being controlled. Your FYP sending you, you know, like rockets and math and like you know propaganda. it's all this yeah propaganda and all that stuff. But like, yo, they're so far ahead in terms of like nuance shopping mm -hmm. like all these things are so far ahead of like mm -hmm. internet culture than most americans mm -hmm. um i'm curious to, to get your thoughts on that because we always said from day one i'm like yo i don't care about getting a you know uh, a brand deal here i want i want a piece of like i, I, I want to work with I, Tencent. I, I care, yeah, I care I, about <laughs> brand deals here but yo if we could get a brand deal in asia Oh man, I'll be yeah. super happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the scale is just different. Yeah, because the size is just different. The market right, size is right. just different. Yeah. I, I, uh, I definitely do agree. And back at Alumni and why we also did uh, shop shop. Remember, we did we did. I was gonna say shopping content, where it's like live streaming, and, and that host. was back in like 2021. Yeah, early. Yep. yeah. And now, I mean, I guess it's always been big, but now it's even like bigger. As yeah, DM but people here they freak out because like. Uh, you know, Mr. Beast has like a, a f now a failed, you know, ghost kitchen. You know, in China, you have KOLs that have like 2000 stores. You know what I mean? Like, a, uh -huh. it, it's just a it's a completely different thing. The scale, mm -hmm. you know. So do you have you um, so when you watch like Chinese Chinese content, like mm -hmm. what, what do you what are some of the interesting trends that you've noticed? A lot of skits, yeah. a lot of skits. Uh, and not just the people that I follow, because I see on my uh, For You page that the ones that are getting like hundreds, thousands of lights, even up to a million lights, that's when I was like, what? <laughs> that's crazy. Just one country. And they're like generating so many, uh, so much attention. And they're usually comedy. They're usually entertainment. Um, they also are very big on live streaming as well. So they monetize crazy on social media platforms because they are the same thing. Um, it's very much like Instagram where you have your feed and then you have like your your shopping, your, your little shopping page. They do that same thing, but they make it very consistent where like they have live streams every like Wednesday and Friday and it blends well with their content. It's not like a completely different thing where they're like, okay, you're a creator and you're like, you're like selling, but they, they, yeah, they, they, they make, they blend it really well that people actually do buy and they do take that person just because they like them and they're like, okay, I'm willing to buy this. And it's become, they're like, I would say day to day, they buy the smallest things from like jewelry to food to like actual um, houseware or like even technology, like everything is on that one app and it's pretty crazy to see. So I do want to get on that platform as well. Um, so besides TikTok, another really huge platform in uh, in the Chinese community is called Little Red Book, Xiaohongshu. So Americans can use that as well. You don't need like a Chinese number to get on like TikTok. Um, so it's it's literally for everyone. You can use it in Taiwan. You can use it in Hong Kong. And their market is huge on that app. And I want to get on the app so bad. So I'm actually thinking about uh, making Chinese content. Tell us about this app. What, I, like, I have no idea what this app is. Yeah, me Break either. it down to me. It's, I know, I know. Obviously, we know WeChat, right? right WeChat right, right. is like 
WhatsApp meets Facebook mm-hmm. meets PayPal meets mm-hmm. a lot of different things. So right. what is like Xiao Hong Shu, mm-hmm. right? That's what yeah, Little Red Book. Yeah, Little. Tra- I mean, mm. Little Red Book is so like Chinese. Like, <laughs> the Chinese Communist Party had the Little Red Book. Like that's for it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, I don't actually don't know where that name came from, but yeah. that that's pretty funny. Uh, it's almost like a the layout of the app is very much like TikTok. Uh. What's it called? They have that new layout of just posts, and they have a name for it. Of just posts, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, carousel. Yeah, ca- yeah, carousel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, so um, so like, like, like not video yeah. that you could like. Yeah, it's just okay. like okay. picture post. Yeah, 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 but you could also post a video on there, and it would be in the same layout. Yep, so it's yep. picture and video all together, and th- I, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like mm-hmm. a like the best word to describe it. So is it like Instagram meets TikTok? It's like everything all together. It's like Pinterest and TikTok and Instagram all together. And, and, and who uses it? Is it young Chinese people, old Chinese people, or everybody? Everybody. They, I think the most powerful thing about that app is the algorithm you're able to see so much more outside of your circle because it's not limited to just your geography. Even though it does push your content out to people around you first, but you're able to see posts that are not tens and thousands of likes. As long as it's something that you have viewed before, they will push that similar content. And I'm not sure if it's about the tags or if it's just about like you sliding all the way to the last picture or like finishing a video. But they have a way of giving you content that's not just the popular content. Interesting. So basically what you're saying is, whereas on FYP, the likelihood of the video that's fed to you, Mm -hmm. even if that's of your interest, it has to have a a number of likes for it to even get to your FYP. What you're saying with Xiao Hongshu is that even if it has like two likes, and I don't know, like, let's say I just liked a bunch of sushi content. Mm-hmm. It's going to get me that sushi content. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. Yeah. Before we start eating, do you want to like, how, how can we help? Oh, oh, we at that part of the podcast. <laughs> 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 I was watching <laughs> some of the episodes. Okay. Copy. Um, Thank you for watching. Yeah. yeah, no, it's actually really informative. And I do think that you guys are very genuine. Thank you. Even from like a creator knowing some of the insights. Yeah. Okay. You, you, Y'all are very uh, genuine. I, actually, I, I would. How can we be better? You know, instead of instead of going right mm. to how how we can help, but like as someone that um, is a creator and just in general, like what feedback do you have for us? How can we make this thing better? That's a great question. <laughs> or what um, kind of stuff would you like to see? Right. I think that's fundamentally what it is. Like, I um I think you guys have great conversations. The only thing that I could. Uh, see is from more like a production side. Okay. Um, so as like a viewer watching um, one of the episodes, let's say that is like uh, an hour and a half, I would, I, I do appreciate the um, the breakdown in the, the what you call it, that that line the, <laughs> where the it scroll. tells you, yeah. In the, yeah, the scroll where it tells you what this is about. Yeah. Um, but if there is like, let's say an agenda at the very beginning, of the video where you're like, okay, so we're going to go over uh, what this is. And then after we're going to go over questions that you may have for us. Right. So instead of you just listening through a whole conversation, mm. like there's a syllabus, it's almost like yeah. a class. Mm. Uh, okay. A table yeah. of contents. Right. Yes, okay. Yes, I yes. see what so you mean. So we could go straight to like where we need or where we are interested in watching. Cool. Right. Even though I could do that with the scroll, but mm-hmm. I think having it like laid out. Would it be helpful to even scroll. have different video? Like, so we try to do that in the short videos. Mm. But would it be even more helpful if we either made more short videos or even like medium videos where we're like, here's a topic and then mm. they could choose whether or not they even. Yeah. Med- medium. Yeah. 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 Medium okay. videos. I think what kind of uh, information has been the most useful? Uh, when the creators ask questions um, about the industry. Oh, int- okay. Yeah. And, and you guys provide content because I think because um, each creator is different. Their, what, their story is different and like where they're process or like where they are at in that uh industry and the industry is different so i think finding that creator that relates to me the most where i can like okay i relate like puja mm-hmm. i think we're in very similar situation we both have part-time jobs we're both trying to like 
be a full-time content creator but we don't know where or like how to narrow it down that's when i want to hear like what you have to say interesting okay mm. Dude, super helpful feedback. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's dope. And then that's that's great that you actually referenced the specific episode. I know. Thank you. Yeah, because I watched the entire day. Yeah. <laughs> I actually wanted to hear what um what their uh progress or like what they've been through and how like the insights can help. Yes. Yeah. We were we are definitely in like very, very similar paths. Yeah. I mean, what do you want to do? Mm. I guess before we even talk about like how can we help, like what what do you want to yeah, like I think it'll be a lot easier for us to provide feedback if we have an idea of what you want to accomplish. Yeah. Um, I So I do a lot of skits because I kind of want to get into acting. Um, and I know that there are influencers, content creators in the past has turned to actor, actresses. I just don't know how my content now can transition over. And if it does transition over, what are some of the challenges that I might not be able to foresee that you guys can kind of see at like a bigger scope? Because I think one of the things that you, that Brian said was, yeah, when you turn into an act, actor or actress and that doesn't work, what happens then? Yeah, what happens then? <laughs> That's yeah. what I want to know. Like what is going to happen then? Like we come back to content or like we keep pushing for um, acting, like when do we, when is a good time to know when to stop? Let me ask you first, like, is there a, um, is there a person in the industry, whether you follow them on YouTube, on whatever platform that you look at as a creator and you're like, oh, I, I would love to do that. A movie star, it doesn't matter. But is there someone that you can kind of look at as a comp, like, you know? Mm. Um, I would say Jamie O. Yang. Huh, but we, huh? our paths are slightly different because he started as a comedian, you know, and I'm like, never done anything uh, close to that. But I do think our backgrounds are similar in that he's from Hong Kong. He speaks fluent Cantonese and I'm like, I'm, I, speak, I speak fluent Cantonese and Mandarin, you know, so we have like similar criterias, but it's he just does food content. Right. He does. Food content. <laughs> he's a big foodie. He's a huge, you know, like he yeah. is the Asian. Mm -hmm. And I kind of in my head, I'm like, I'm that Asian, too, mm -hmm. but it's just from New York. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I do look to him. But then I'm like, we're not exactly the same. So Jimmy's interesting because um, he he went directly from uh, he kind of did the traditional thing. Mm. Right. Like so he I think he was like auditioning. I, again, I don't I'm actually not that intimate with his story, but it feels like he went through the movies the the hollywood sort of like go audition do your thing get a bunch of notoriety then do your special then take social and then kind of run with it and do more movies um is there anyone that's like more digital like straight digital and maybe jimmy did start that way and i just don't know but like i was introduced to him because of big movies right, right. but um yeah is there anyone else that you're like oh I, I i saw this person go from a vlogger to something else you know what i mean that 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 you look to maybe aquafina okay because she started on youtube and she had she had like a song that she released and then she popped off and then she went to acting i'm not sure if that's like the exact process definitely i would yeah i would i say yeah she was a youtuber Close, for closer, sure yeah for sure closer but she's in music so i'm like i don't i guess i'm just trying to find that exact yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know but i guess it it is hard and is there is there any YouTubers that you follow that are American that are now active? anybody actually yeah uh, anybody um Michelle Choi she is what does she do she does oh she does like lifestyle content yeah, right? yeah she's yeah, based yeah. in New York she mm -hmm. does like makeup yeah yeah, yeah. like you know, pretty face, yep, like, yep, you know what yep, I mean? Like, yep. yeah, I think Soft spoken. I, yeah. It's like she, she <laughs> She's really about. pretty. That's why I'm like, we're so different. That, there's no one out but, there. But she is she acting? She's not. She just does lifestyle content. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think I've seen her content before. Yeah. They um, usually talk like, hey, guys. So today, today I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas we over here like, yo, <laughs> we over here holding it down. <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> are you more comfortable in Mandarin and Cantonese or English? Or is it 50-50? It's 50-50. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it really depends on what, I, what I'm what i doing. Yeah, it's 
Yeah, the, the things the reason why I ask is, you know, when I when I meet people with like fluency like this, especially as Americans, we're so we're so uh like heliocentric. Everything revolves around us and American pop culture. But then you really think about it and you're like, dude, that's a tiny market when you consider the world, right? Mm. So we're we're always trying to think about like, you know, like more people watch YouTube in India every day than the entire population of the United States. And we have 350 million people here. Wow. Right? Like that's that's how big these markets are. Indonesia, there there's like like Indonesia, Nigeria, like like the, these Brazil. I used to work at a, a YouTube company, the largest YouTube network in the world and our biggest market was Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. So it you know, it's like even if you dominated New York City and you got everyone to fuck with you in New York City, how big is that market compared to like okay, uh, I could start doing some Mandarin content and I have, you know, one one hundredth of an audience. But because the numbers are so big, you're like, oh, man, you know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree. I agree. That's why I actually thought about doing YouTube in Chinese. Yeah. Um, which captures like the Taiwan and Hong Kong. Yeah. Areas. But and then Xiao Hongshu with like China. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and by the way, even just from a utility standpoint, like, I don't know how many Chinese people are coming to the States anymore right now because like it's not, you know, you know, and <laughs> oh, I, we say this all the time, even with Korean, like my cousins in Korea live a way better lifestyle than most people here in the United States now, just because mm -hmm. like things are changing so much. But, um, you know, as far as uh, your utility, for people out there, they might not even know if you're if you're showing insider New York culture to Americans and to New York people in New York. How crazy could that be if you're showing that to people in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, in China? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I'm your plug. You want to know what it's really like in, in New York City? Here it is. Mm. Like, isn't that just a way bigger market? Mm. Yeah, I I um, translated some of my New York memes and I posted on Xiao Hongshu. Yeah. And. Maybe because I'm not consistent enough, but not they're not doing very good. Okay. I get numbers in like at one and one, and then the rest is like three, four likes. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm like, maybe I need to start doing like speaking content. Yeah. Because they do fuck with stories. They do like hearing someone talk instead of just like sound and then motion. Yeah. So memes don't really work in 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 that um pl on that platform. Do you follow the that Dr. Case Lynn? I sent you her stuff, right? Yeah, the the lady who breaks down Chinese trends. I think I do. Yeah, so I she basically she she has On like a, yeah she has an accent, yeah. you know, because uh. it's pretty clear that English is in her first language. Mm. But she just does like green screen. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This yeah. new trend is happening in China right now, and yeah, yeah, she yeah, just yeah. basically sums it up for people who are not Chinese mm. um, to see what's going on in the Chinese social media world or, you know, pop culture. Mm. Um, I guess what Brian's getting at is like, who's doing that for the Chinese people mm. in China, uh, but from a New York American lens. Right. And, right. and I like, guess you know how you're doing the meme. Who's mm. explaining the meme for the people in China? Right. 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 I right, think good. that could be very interesting, mm. you know, like, because I think the, that's, that's the utility that you're providing to a much bigger market, right? Well, that's your world-class advantage. No one else can do that but you. Yeah. You watch, like, Chinese shows. You you know what Chinese pop culture references are. Mm. Um, you know, you, you speak both Cantonese and Mandarin. So, like, like, for instance, like, I don't know, like, it could be as silly as, uh, like, when Ice Spice was at the top of her game in New York. Um, explaining munch to a Chinese person in China. Uh, you know what I mean? Because uh, like, that's a really yeah, good like how can you yeah. how can you explain that unless you're from New York? Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. To have that understanding and also speak it in a language that they understand. Exactly. Right. And in, in, in the most authentic way. That's what I'm saying. Right. You're you're in the point oh one percent of people that could do that. Uh, true. <laughs> like they can't fuck no, with no, you. No, no. Yeah. You, uh. Like who else could do that? Yeah, I think that's kind of the advantages advantages that you have over, um, I guess, any other uh, 
Chinese American content creator that wants to make content that wants to do content in New York because you know I'm we're in the food space so every day we see <laughs> different people essentially emulating what we kind of format it right mm. whether it's like getting access to the kitchen or making it about the the restaurant owner instead of uh, instead of uh, the food mm -hmm. we see this format that we initially kicked off in 2021 um or i guess end of 2020 uh now being proliferated more mm -hmm. and more people are doing that so how can we once again create that gap between ourselves and these other creators because essentially the differentiation is what's going to have is 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 the is the formula for longevity right Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you doing memes where you doing uh, a funny dance in front of these restaurants. It might have worked maybe two years ago, but obviously it doesn't have that same pull that it did before. So you got to mm -hmm. constantly recreate. And, right. But going after a bigger and different market. And I think for you, it's always been, and I think I've been telling you this, it's just that your world class advantage of being a trilingual New Yorker. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's a, that's a great point. I think it all goes back to like, yeah, basically, what what are your advantages and where can you, you know, no one's gonna be. Uh, you might be a David Goggins and you're you're talking about like stay hard and you're motivational and you're running two hundred miles and like you know people can't you can't emulate that you can't you can try mm -hmm. on some motivational shit but you can't do that unless you're that guy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, you might be a. You know, a beauty blogger, you might be a gamer and there's like whatever it is, those, those are your unfair advantages. So we think a lot about unfair advantages in markets, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, I think that if we wanted to program Righteous Eats or J Key in a way where the, the channels in a way where we were like, oh, we're just trying to maximize, you know, followers, then we would have probably taken a different stance than what mm -hmm. we're doing right now. But we're, you know, we probably would have just, yeah. Like whether it's like we would have done all like do all K-pop or like, you know what I mean? Or mm. some shit, but like we don't want to do that, right? Mm. Yeah, because we know that if we lean into that, it might be quick growth. But we also know that as quick as, as, quick as it grows, it's going to come down as quick as well. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. people that are watching content, they're consumers. And consumers want to be constantly... Um, entertained with new stuff, with newness, and it doesn't matter how good the content is. Once if it's if it's repetitive enough, it's gonna get dull. Mm -hmm. You know. Agree. Yeah. So, I mean, you want to be a full time content creator. So, what is the biggest hurdle? Well, I think just regular income, steady yeah. income, right? That, it's mm -hmm. it's probably lumpy right now. Like it might be great one month and then like, oh, you don't get another deal for another couple months. Is that yeah, what it is? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just consistent revenue. Yep. And also, you know, being in creating content in a consistent Well, tell us about your way. team. You, you you said now you have someone that helps you record the stuff, right? Yeah. How did you find this person? What are their responsibilities? What are your responsibilities? A friend of mine. Okay. Coworker. <laughs> <laughs> um so literally just a moving tripod. So I still do everything else. I edit the video, I come up with the idea. Um, I don't have a set creative process. I kind of have an idea of what I want. And when we get to Chinatown or like the restaurant, I'm like, okay, I want to say this. Or oh, does it sound weird? <laughs> so we kind of like make up lines at the spot. So I don't know if you can tell from my content, it's very short. I don't really have a lot that like, no, it's not like a whole scene. It's just like movements and then like me saying one or two lines and then that's it, that's the end of the video. Uh, I do think I could plan it a little bit more, but I'm just not in the habit of creating, uh, or I don't have that structure yet. And I don't wanna push myself too hard, but I do think that it's about time for me to actually have a structure and also just spend more time on it because I do want to be a full-time content creator. So I can't be, really, I can't have that same mindset. I got to change things up a little bit. What What do you think is the the one thing that's helped you the most so far in uh, your ability to to make content? Like, how why have you been successful? 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm so because yeah. I'm gifted. Uh, no, I mean, is it is it that is it is it that is it like no? I saw the trend and I was just very consistent with it. Um, I've been able to, yeah. I'm, if you could give away any any sort of game or sauce mm. for the people out there, I think the best way for any content creator to do it is to pick a few things that you like and then try out each and every one of them. I think the best thing that I've done um, was trying out different types of content. Because when I first started out, it was Chinese. And then it went into like food and it went into like spots around Chinatown. But if I did, if I didn't keep changing my, um, or not changing, but if I didn't try things out, then I wouldn't know what I'm really passionate about. If I'm not sure whether or not I am passionate about it, then I wouldn't give it my all. So I think trying is really important. And in the very beginning, you don't really have anything to lose. It's not like you're losing your audience by switching lane mm -hmm. because you can like try one or two videos and then go back to what you're originally doing. And I think that's key. Yeah. But all in all, keeping an eye on what people like is also really important. So it can't be just what you like. It has to be what the audience fucks with, uh, fucks with as well. Yeah. One thing on the switching lanes, one thing that we always talk about is uh, you shouldn't switch lanes, but you should try to widen your lane, right? Mm, mm. And so I think if people figure you out and they're like, oh, okay, I, I oh, JK knows about food and culture, cool. And then now food and culture can spend spread outside of the restaurant, outside of the home cooking, outside of the, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But it's rooted still in culture and still rooted in food. You know what I mean? Mm. So we talk about that a lot. Whereas, and we, we're guilty of this too. We, we If we go from culture to like business topics all of a sudden, even mm. if it is all rooted in the same thing, you know, in J. Key and his his personal interest, it might not be so obvious right, right off the bat. You yeah, know? Be, mm. like those content failed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it didn't pop at all. Yeah. <laughs> it was crickets. But, <laughs> um, but it's figuring out how do you bridge that instead of, mm. you know, because again, like you have to ease the audience into it, right? Mm. Like, you know, like if they never had, I don't know, like chicken and broccoli before and like, yo, and you just like, yo, try this. Like, yo, it's a little too much. Like you have to like let them try something else to ease them into it. So, so something that they're familiar with. Well, and that's why this is creator's lunch, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. So people are like, yeah, I mean, we, we were literally having these conversations for real. And, and now there's a camera on, but then it's also like, oh, it makes sense. Uh, the food guy and the food guys are doing a power lunch with creators. Okay, cool. Now we can talk about creators in a way that's a little bit more mm. lane widening instead of lane switching. Right. Mm. So it's not just all of a sudden like, yo, <laughs> JK and Brian that has this food page that focus so much on community. Now they're like rabid capitalists. <laughs> they, all they talk about is monetizing on social media, you know, right. like, so it's not that like, yo, it's again, the, the truth is in the gray and there are nuances and how do we ease people into it is something that we constantly think about. Um, but I want to go back into the topic of your pursuit of becoming a full time content creator, because I still think that you can um, and I know you can. Um, is there anything that you think that she could like immediate actions that she could take to get there? I think strategy team and access to more, uh, just like access to structure. So I think that like, I think it's amazing how far you've come and, and it's, it's a sign of your resourcefulness and, and your moxie and your ability to like, just make shit happen. But I think if you're much more deliberate and you're like, Oh, actually, I want to be maniacal with like, hey, actually, the Chinese market's way bigger than this market. Uh, you know, like I think if you're, I think if you're much more thoughtful and you have um, uh, just more access to like a little bit more of the, yeah, the structure. You know, I think I think you would kill it. Uh, you know, and I think you could very much instead of like when we started, and and again, this is the benefit of having a team and and just being old. I'm I'm like ten years older than Jakey, but like I knew very much. Oh, we're going to get this kind of a deal. Mm. And that might be 40 videos out, but we seeded that deal 40 videos out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Versus 
you know, like, oh, we're just going to make shit happen. And then like, oh, someone, oh, shit, Nike reached out to us. It's like, nah, we've, we, I mean, not with on, but like, you know, we're very much like, oh, wait, we know that a financial in institution will hit us up for this thing in, in this time. We know that this politician will like, it's all very, like, we try to think about these things. And it's not always going to happen exactly the way you think it will. Mm -hmm. But we definitely try to, like, instead of just throwing your your fishing line out there and saying, seeing what you can catch, I think you could, like, very okay. strategically mm -hmm. figure out where you want to drop your line. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll be super successful, actually, if you start doing that. Even more so than the way that you're doing it right now. I mean, you're already doing this, by the way. You're like, oh, well, okay, so Chinese, Chinatown, then I could do the food. Okay, let me expand food and see if I can talk about, uh, you know, uh, small businesses overall. Okay, great. Uh, you know, they, they might like me. So then now, since it's me, then what about the dating? What about, I, I think you're doing all of this, but I think you could even zoom out even further and say, cool, like, I think we should go after this, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely think I lag the, um, the experience and also the, um, the insight to see the bigger picture. I'm very much focused on like now, like what are we doing now? I don't really plan ahead. I'm just kind of like in the moment, okay, I feel like doing this. I kind of see this, I, kinda, I can kind of do it. Do you want to um, start planning ahead? Is that something that you want to do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I guess for the longest time, I, was, I didn't know if I was ready. And I was like scared of everything. And now as I'm like getting more experience and I'm like, okay, I mean, I definitely want this. So I, I want to be full time. So yeah. So you say so you want to be an actor. That's it doesn't your, have to be That's an your actor. ultimate goal or what, should, what, what mm. if you have to like, yo, this is like what I want to do in five years. What is that going to be? Acting. <laughs> but if I don't, it's okay. <laughs> it's totally okay. I'm very What, what does acting, acting mean for you? I guess. Being in a movie having lines <laughs> or better put uh, with numbers i would say making uh six digits from just a movie and not like overall but if you made like seven digits from a from being a full-time like instagram influencer would you still want the movie so it's all nothing is one or the other there's no like together not yeah I, so i think a lot of times people are like um like I want to be in a movie, right? Mm -hmm. But then we think about that and we're like, well, so what is a movie really, right? Okay, movie is exposure. It's you being able to be creative. It's, you might even want to write the movie. Like, you know, there's different things. But then if you really break it down, you're like, well, actually the only thing I actually really want to do in a movie is like, I want to write it because I want my story to be told. Or you know what? The only reason I really want to be in a movie is because I think it exposes me to this number of people. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I think that's what he was asking. It's like, well, what is the ultimate goal? For us, like, I'll speak for myself. For me, I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. The only thing that would be different is just sort of like being able to um, expand the scale and 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 maximizing time. Right. That's that's it. But we're doing exactly. I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. I want to be talking to creators. I want to be making shit. You know, pretty much. You know? Yeah. I so I, I guess being a little bit more specific about the intention is really important. Because, like, do you want to be in a movie because you want to be famous? Do you want to be in a movie because, you know, I don't know, like, like he said, like, you want to write the own movie? You want to be a producer? You know what I mean? Like, because I think once you get more specific about what exactly is that you want, then the roadmap is just a bit more clear. Mm. You know, I mean, I didn't want to make content because I wanted to be famous. You know, what I mean, I wanted to do it because I understood that with the capabilities that I have, which is a fluency that you have as well, is that I understand how to be in front of a camera. I understand how to be in different rooms and I feel comfortable in those rooms. And I realized that not everybody could do that. And that's the world class advantage that I have. So using this as leverage, I could build more businesses. I could help more people. And I could also sustain a lifestyle that I want. Mm -hmm. So that's more so the goal. And getting famous, if that's getting a, you know, getting a little bit more recognized in the streets of New York, if that is part of the process for me to get to everything else that I want to get to, then yeah, like, you know, I would have to take that route. But, you know, 
getting recognized in the streets of New York is not something that is like my goal. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. like part of the process. Don't you already get recognized in the streets? Yeah, you that's do. what I mean. It's oh. just like me getting here is not, it wasn't part, that wasn't part of my mm-hmm. goal. My goal was to sustain the lifestyle that I want to live, mm-hmm. help people, make money from, make money doing it, and also build more businesses that is mm-hmm. going to sustain everything else. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. A businessman. For sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if we could summarize it to just that, you know, but. Um, one very practical thing that came up, I think, uh, if I can provide any unsolicited advice is, I think, you know how you, you said, oh, you were very much in the Chinatown bubble until you went to Brooklyn and you got your first job. Mm-hmm. I think what he said is try to put yourself in as many rooms as possible because and build to your world class advantage that you already have. Like you're already able to go in so many rooms and and be comfortable in all those rooms. Like that's that's our unfair advantage, right? We literally had a politician on before this. So we had a politician on, we're speaking to business leaders, we're talking to like small business leaders and then also like executives running the largest companies, you know? Like that fluency and just being able to, to be in that many rooms, I think that will give you the perspective that you need and that you want in being able to zoom out and think long-term, I think so, mm-hmm. right? So like, I, I think you should be in rooms with other creators, right? And not just creators in New York, but like, okay, hey, you're a, be- you're a beauty creator. We don't even have to collab, but like, what are you doing? Oh, you're a, f- you're a financial, you're a personal finance creator. What, what are you doing? Oh, you're not even a creator, you're a lawyer. You're talking about this. Oh, how are you thinking about this? Like, I think just being exposed to that kind of a thing will really help um, add to your fluency that you already have. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that you also worked in politics a little mm-hmm. bit right so, oh really i didn't know that yeah. mm, that was my first job I what, what were you for, doing hmm, i worked for an elected official uh, who represented lower manhattan marte worked, no <laughs> <laughs> city council uh oh. no uh yuli new okay yeah yeah she's yeah she's on the state level okay uh, some uh, assembly member she she was in office for about four to six years i believe okay hmm. Cool. That was my first job, yeah. So I, I was the Chinatown person. Yeah, so I was always the Chinatown person, which is why I'm like, okay, I feel very close. Is is this. any of this uh, narrative shared with your audience? No, no, yeah. not at all. What yeah. were you doing for the campaign or for the office? Yeah, what was your role? I was her uh, constituent manager and I overlooked Chinatown. So all of the committee meetings, all of the galas, um, Everything, everything yeah, you could think of. Because you're also trilingual. Like you yeah. could speak to yeah. an auntie in Cantonese, right, right, right. small talk to a small business owner in Mandarin. Mm, yeah, I was her, but for Chinatown. I was, yeah, I was the face. That's again, even more of your world-class advantage, I think. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. I, I think I miss a lot of uh, what I have and what I can offer. And I'm kind of focused on like what I want to do. And it's, it is pretty short term. And if I do want to take this seriously, I, I definitely need to look at it as a, as a whole. Do you have any ideas, content ideas for Ting Ting so that she could probably plan ahead and then that could lead to specific? Because I think right now, the, the, what you need to jump into being a full-time content creator is the delta of how much you're making, right? Money. Um, do you have any suggestions for her on like, what can she do programming wise? I mean, this is, this is, yeah, I mean, I mean, it could be, it depends on how maniacal you want to be. Right. Let's get maniacal. So you're like, okay, well I need to make, I want to make 120 grand. I want to make 10 grand a month. Okay, great. If I want to make 10 grand a month, where are the opportunities in terms of like, where are brands spending the most money? Right. Uh, you know, have you done a liquor deal yet? No. Okay. So like, you know, we actually had another friend who. We told them to turn down a liquor deal because I'm like, yo, that's all they're offering you? Forget that. They have the most expendable, the most disposable income because they can't advertise in any other places, right? So then I'd be like, okay, cool. Like, just, I would be mani- maniacal in that way, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, I don't know if you want, do you know what Ting Ting is doing right now for her other job? So she works at Apple, right? Exactly, right? The retail store. Yeah, so, yeah. so even that, right? You, you, do you share that? No. So, so here's the thing. If I want to be maniacal, I'd be like, I would, I would seed that 
and then and then seed that and did you know that like the addressable market in tech business is huge? Mm-hmm. Marquez Brownlee makes a ton of money and the RPMs and the CPMs, your revenue per thousand and like the brand deals there. If you're if you're getting asked to unbox a, a Samsung phone or an, a, a new iPhone, which you have the fluency because you actually work in the store, dude, you're going to make that's that's like, yo, I want thirty thousand dollars for for, the, for that kind of a thing, because the market is so different. That's way different than someone trying to sell like a a face mask, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just different or sneakers, right? So like, I, I would be maniacal that way. Just say like, okay, cool. Where where are they spending the most money in terms of uh, uh, advertising? And then I would go after like, okay, well, does that actually align with products that I use with my lifestyle? In the in consumer electronics, it clearly does. You literally work at Apple. Like you literally work at There it. are things that we yeah. cannot say because I kind of represent Apple. So in yeah. our contract, they're like pretty strict about it. Yeah. We can talk about like work condition. We can talk about like, you know, the- No, no, you don't have to talk about any of that. Things. You yeah, can just talk about the fact that you get access to products. So if you were to mm-hmm. review a product or showcase a new product, or just do like, this is what a, you know, right, right, Apple right, right, uh, right. keyboard looks like, unboxing that, mm. you, get, you could get access to that, right? Yeah, again, I don't know what the employment contract is, yeah. but mm. it could even be like, this is how maniac, maniacal we would be. So it, it'd be like, okay, you have a vlog that you don't even reveal that you work for Apple or that company for 20 videos. But then in this first video, you're like, I got to go to work today. And then it's like, I work at a big retailer. But then we know that through that journey, your community will eventually get to know that you work for a big electronic consumer company that sells, you know, consumer mm. goods. You never even said what it is, but you wear one single color and people are going to be like, oh, she works for Apple. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then and then that like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So so then the video number 20 is, oh, you know, here's someone as someone that works for that looking at a competitor's item. You know what I'm saying? Like it could be mm. there's there's ways to do it. Right. Yeah. But again, that's that's probably a way more like if you're if you're very strategic about setting that up. I mean, you mentioned liquor. Chinese people love Hennessy with tea, green tea and honey. Mm. It's like a classic combination in every Chinese banquet or mm. weddings. Um, he addressed he mentioned the liquor market because the liquor market's marketing budget is always going to be huge. You know mm. what I mean? Because they can't advertise in other places and they're very specific about advertisement. Um, every year in Chinatown for the longest time, Hennessy has done like Chinatown dinners and Lunar New Year dinners. Mm. There's a reason why they're spending that because they understand that the brown liquor market is very significant in the Asian American community. So you're a Chinatown girl who grew up in Chinatown, rep in Chinatown, even was a, uh, working with an assembly woman who rep Chinatown. Um, why don't you make content about different types of Chinese liquor that people drink. This is just a hypothetical. Mm. Baiju, Baiju, you know, all these different types of stuff. You do that, not as a brand deal, but you just do it. Mm. See what happens. And you insert that into your lifestyle content every once in a while. Oh, I went to a Chinese wedding. Of course, uncles are drinking, you know, Hennessy with tea. Mm. Insert that. And just do it consistently, but not do it like over the head, like mm-hmm. too not on the nose. But you do that for like six months, just like insert it here and here and there. Some brand representative is watching that mm. and it's going to all come back circle. And maybe not Hennessy directly, but Hennessy's competitor. It's like, yo, we actually need to go into the Chinese market. It's like, yo, you want to work with us? Well, I mean, the, I mean, how many multicultural agencies do we know that literally have those budgets specifically for those events. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's that. And then I also know that you've done stuff with uh, Nike for, uh, was for like a Lunar New Year thing, right? Oh, for sneakers. For sneakers. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember. Uh, the homie um, from Nike, yeah, yeah he, he hit me up about that. Um, so you, in all your videos, I would just rock a pair of Nike sneakers or whatever it may be. And then the Nike and the lifestyle sneaker market, the budgets are not as big as tech per se, but it is something that is always something that you could have it as part of your wardrobe, right? So even if you could get some sort of a brand deal through that, like that's something that you could just inject on a regular basis and all those things could accumulate. So, that- so, so to make it even more targeted though, so basically I think that the step would be 
go and write down all the different industries that you you're just like as part of your lifestyle now and the lifestyle that you want to you want to have right like what are the things that really interest you it might be travel it might be home goods it might be these are all huge markets but people don't think of them as that right mm -hmm. and then just start to say like okay cool this is going to be a goal that i'm working towards by the way jakey we we did um when when he went full time as a content creator the first thing he did was he went to five different countries in five different continents right, 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 right. he was in kenya mm -hmm. he went to he went to asia uh he went to uh south america right and i mean we're not doing travel content but it was something that frankly we did because at some point we knew that we we're going to get like an airline you mm. know what i'm saying um so in that kind of regard like okay for us more that was much more like jo just cultural fluency mm. and like we are a global citizen that you know all of that but like that's that's the kind of thing that you you could do like home goods we have friends that are in home goods right mm. um you know travel i mean yeah, so just write down like, yo, these are all the stuff that I want to get into. And then we could kind of dissect, all right, cool, this market. Yeah, prioritize that, don't do this. Yeah. Like, you know, personal finance, credit card, has Klarna hit you up, all these guys? Personal finance, you know, if you get one person to sign up for a, a credit card, the bounty on a credit card is $400. Four or $500. Their acquisition costs are so high. Mm -hmm. So when they, So when they're doing deals, dude, they give you all kinds of money. Mm. But, yeah. but they can't even find you if that's not part of what it is. The content, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's just that type of strategy. And, mm -hmm. you know, we could even like chop it up again, you know, after all, all, you know, after the podcast and we could revisit this combo. But if you could just write down, OK, cool, in five years, this is I guess you could talk about smart goals. Yeah, I know you talk about this a lot, but I mean, you probably heard it already. Simple, measurable achievable realistic and timed so instead of saying mm -hmm. like oh i want to be a full-time content creator mm -hmm. all right really breaking down mm -hmm. what is it that, what is it oh okay I, I need to make 100 grand all right cool if you need to make 100 grand what is that but you know what seven eight thousand dollars a month okay cool let's okay how do i get to that that need, that means i have to make you know however much per month well if i need to make that much per month and you know cpms on youtube are x TikTok is y okay great i need to make you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i think everything could be broken down that way I, so get in other rooms, uh, write down your, write down essentially the, the, the industries that you like, um, and then try to get information as to which one of those industries you're also going to find that some industries you might like, but the, you're competing against a ton of people or they just might not pay well. Right. Uh, and then, and then lastly, I do think that finding more like, uh, finding and, and building more of a team would help you too, for sure. Right. I mean, one of the gifts in life is to find, a, a, you know, like a business partner or someone that truly aligns with, you know, the vision of what you're trying to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's really smart right now. You're like, oh, I've actually been thinking about management and reaching out to a manager or an agent. But even with them, the two things that I said before that, I think that would actually convince the person that you probably want to work with to really take you seriously. You're like, hey, mm -hmm. this is what I do. This is where I think my world class advantage is. This, these are the verticals and the and the industries and the markets that I want to go into. I think that I have a very unique perspective on this and have a huge advantage. I just need to get in front. I need to get put into that room. I need to have those conversations. I need to be able to navigate and structure the deals in this way. And I think you can do that. What do you say? If you come at them like that, they're going to be like, oh, shit. OK, I fuck with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, hey, you work at uh, this agency. Will you sign me? Dude, mm -hmm. like, nah. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's like, okay, what can you do for me? Because that's what the agents and the managers are looking for, too. Because right. like if you come in and say, yo, I already have this market, this market, and I already have this deal without you. What's up? Mm. It's a different conversation, you know. Do, do you do you guys actually sign creators or <laughs> do you work with creators? You try I to think get signed? <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't. Uh, we don't. And I think I, I remember I, you guys said you yeah. guys are mentors. You yeah, you, you know why? Tees. Yeah, oh. because we'd rather do it for free, and that way it's like it's just goodwill. If you blow yeah. up, our, our if you blow up and you do your thing, I think when you run an empire, you're gonna be like, hey, I remember you guys. You want to invest in my thing? Like that's how we want to get paid. That's how we want to give back. And it's just too much work to be. Yeah. So basically, what he's saying is like, let's say if you get like a twenty thousand dollar brand deal. I don't want to be like, yo, I need $2,000 as the manager fee. You know what I mean? Like, that's cool. And by no means, $2,000, yo, I, 
I, I could use the two thousand dollars. Don't get me twisted, but I'd rather get to a point where it's like you build a two hundred million dollar, I don't know, like Chinese you have been company. And then y'all want ten percent of that, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, let me get ten percent uh, of that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, don't, I, you know, that's kind of how we want to uh, build relationships, because, you know, and and you know, speaking of, um, I know we're talking about the monetary aspects of our operation. Um, we also do a lot of brand deals and projects for free as well. If we feel like the opportunity here is beyond money. We, we talk about this a lot. For instance, um, you know, we did a we did two events with Samsung, two back to back events uh, with Samsung. Was it three? No, two. We did two, right? We did two events with Samsung. The first event that we did with them, their whole budget was like ten thousand hmm. dollars, and we were like, "Oh, that's not even the cost of one of our videos." You know what I mean? And they wanted me at the talent to promote stuff, and we're like, "Nah, like that's just way below our budget." But instead, what we said, yo, we'll do this project with you if you allow us to openly tell the people how much budget we're getting and how much budget that we're spending on hiring street vendors, you know. And on top of that, they kind of gave us like a space in the uh, Times Square billboard, which normally mm. would have costed $250,000 a week. Mm. But we were like, OK, we'll give you a little like shine on that billboard. Mm. So we didn't make any money from it. But we were able to invest more heavily into our relationship with our community and also build a relationship with a global brand. Now, if we go back to them anytime, like we could use their space. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just like we're looking at a long term in terms of that. Right. Now, circling back to why you why we think having a mentor or having you know having a team is important is because if you're an independent, self-funded creator where you're wearing like six different hats, like being a producer, talent, editor, setting up your own tripod. You just don't have the bandwidth to think about these things, right? So it's good to just have a team member that you could bounce ideas like, okay, yo, like I'm trying to do this. Like, how can we think about it in terms of five, 10 years instead of five days or five weeks, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so. <laughs> Understood, understood. No, I think it's great insight. And I think it's definitely essential for any creator that wants to go full time. Strategy is definitely key. And appreciate the honesty and also the transparency, because I think that's what we need in the creator space, especially uh, for people with experience. That's not usually share. Um, so I appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, hit us up whenever you need. Like if yeah, we're in a group chat together, so feel free to highlight at us anytime. Yeah. If you're like, yo, what do you think? What do you think about this deal? Be like, yeah, take it. Because even though they're the pay is shit, mm. I think it'll unlock five other things. Mm. That's something that we talk about all the time. Yeah. Right. Or, 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 or nah, right. fuck that. If they want it, make them pay. Otherwise, say no. You're right. like, really? Right. Yes, right. make them pay. Otherwise, say no. Yeah, you I know? think that's yeah. one of the biggest struggles I have. Because I have no one to talk to. I don't understand yeah. the market. I don't know what to ask for. Mm -hmm. Like Besides money, I'm like, what else is there to ask for? And even if I ask this amount, what is like a reasonable, acceptable amount? Yeah. Because I don't want to lose the opportunity, but at the same time, like if they're super low on me, how would I know? You know? Um, but. Yeah. I mean, all of those conversations, you know, feel free to holler at us. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I would love to share whatever info that we could share. Because I think, again, at the end of the day, folks like you have the fluency, the talent, and you have the grit for you to like set up your own tripod and try to make your own dating show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that shows me that, yo, you have grit. Um, it's just access to information. Mm. Yeah, know? and that you just need uh, you just need to get in more, you need to get in more rooms and with, like you're a great like band, like you play, you just need to play with other really great people, right? Mm. And then be like, oh shit, I wasn't playing jazz before, but now I am. Oh shit. Oh, you're playing soca. Oh right, shit. Like that's what it is. And if you could keep adding those packs on, then you're gonna, you'll, you'll be out of here. But like that's that's what it is. Because then you're like, oh wait, you guys are getting that much as tech review guys. Okay, cool. Then I need to restructure how I'm thinking about this thing. Yeah. Um, right. Even if you're making two videos a week, I know you do these memes and skits that gets probably a much larger view. Mm -hmm. But 
how would a brand representative mm-hmm. look at that and be like, okay, cool. Like, how can what can we do with her? Or let's be even more real. Or how can you use that to your advantage? You know how we would do it? So you put together a deck, right? And you're like, oh, we, we're doing 30 million views a month, mm-hmm. right? Well, they don't know that like your lifestyle content, which they're hiring you for, might get 5 million of those views. And 25 million of those views might be because you're doing timely ad hoc stuff that capitalizes on either SEO news or like a meme. Yo, at mm-hmm. the end of the day, if, if you know who you're speaking to and what their objectives are, you could say, oh, yo, you're, you're this agency. Yeah, I do 30 million views a month. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, even though like maybe 20 pieces of content out of like, yeah, 19 out of the 20 pieces of content might just be a bunch of meme videos, mm-hmm. you know? Right. But just that one video is like, I don't know, a tech review. Right. You could say, yo, at the end of the month, I get 30 mil. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's just all about like constructing the narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's what's important. Mm. This was great. I mean, th- you, this was really helpful for for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm just, I'm just glad that I got to caught up with Ting Ting. Yeah, she, she's been avoiding me. That's not true. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she's been avoiding me for a while. So I'm glad that we got to caught up, and I'm very happy that you were able to uh, just continuously do build build your own brand and continuously invest into creating something that you're passionate about. Um, but yeah, I'm, you know, like now that we, you got to meet him, you know, you got to hear a little bit more about, I guess, what we're up to. Yeah, just feel free to highlight us anytime. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Thank you course. for all the insight. It is definitely uh, constructive criticism that I needed. It. It's admiration. We we I, I'm not criticizing what you. I we love what you're doing. I want to see it go further. That's what it is. Yeah. No, actually, that's the wrong word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's more like well, how how it can improve. My yeah. my actual next steps instead of just having like that, you know? Yeah. 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 That go for it. You're great. Yeah. We want it to be real. And you guys are definitely real and transparent. So thank yeah. you.